Yes. Boom! <laughs> Over the past two weeks, we've talked about why we use the Gregorian calendar and why the sun sets and rises at a different time every single day. But now let's put it all together and figure out why we have the calendar divided how we do. To figure this out, we have to understand that our calendar actually revolves around the moon. But how is the moon linked to our calendar? I'm back in Savannah and I spoke to a few people to see if they could figure it out. To begin, I asked them the following question. How many times does the moon orbit the earth in one year? How many times in one year does the moon uh, go around the earth? Holy mackerel. <laughs> oh my gosh. This should be something that we know. I feel like we should know this. How many times does the moon orbit the earth per year? The cycles of the moon. I couldn't tell you. Do you know? Not off the top of my head. Ooh. 365. 365? Do you think it orbits the Earth I mean, it's once a day, more than once a day, or less than once a day. It's either more or less, but I can't tell you, so it's... It's not perfect. No. I think it's less. It's slightly, it's slightly less than 365. Every 28 days... Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe it's... It's gotta be less. It's less. It's less than 365. It is less than 365. We'll go with three. We'll go with uh, 297. So it's going to be a little more than 12. Ah, I don't know. I mean, that's the answer I'm looking for. How many times? I'm like 12 for some reason. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dang! You're so so wise. I mean, it might be tied to like calendars and everything else. So um, I'm going to go 12. Well, oh, right? oh. Yep. Yes. It is. It's 12. Okay. It's just about 12. Logical Actually, deduction. Yeah. All right, this is our winning strategy, so let's keep going. Okay. To get the answer, we have to first understand that we actually calculate the moon's orbit in two different ways. The first way is called the sidereal orbit, and this is the orbit of the moon as it moves around the Earth in a 360 degree circle. One sidereal orbit of the moon takes 27.3 days to complete. Then there's the other orbit of the moon, which is called the synodic orbit. This orbit takes 29.53 days to go around the Earth. And it's very similar to how we discussed the Earth moves in the previous video. The synodic orbit of the moon is when we see it go from a full moon through all the phases and come back to a full moon. Because the Earth is moving in space relative to the Sun, the moon has to move a little bit farther past its sidereal orbit in order to become a full moon again. And so that's why there's an extra 2.2 days on average between full moons. In one year, the moon makes 13.37 sidereal orbits and only 12.36 synodic orbits. This number of synodic orbits is actually how we derive our months. After centuries of calculation, the phases of the moon actually began to play an integral role in how we count the weeks and the months. And it's this 12.36 cycle per year of the moon orbiting the earth from full moon to full moon that became the 12 month cycle of our calendar system. Knowing that, I began to ask people the following question. Why are there seven days in a week? So why are there seven days in a week? And this oh. does have something to do with Oh my gosh! Why is there seven days in a week? That's a good question. That's Why true. do we have a seven day week? How do we get seven days in a week and the week is a month and the month is a year and then so forth? So it's it's got to be based upon that counting system, right? <laughs> seven phases of the moon maybe? And it's moon related? It's moon related. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. What you I really know. don't. It's a good. I think that's a good thought. Maybe it would do with like phases. And it's it, mathematical. There has to be some cyclical nature to it. Um, there are seven days in a week. Wow. Because of the amount of time that the moon takes to transition from quarter moon to full moon. Yes. Boom. <laughs> To figure this out, we actually have to know the four major phases of the moon. The first quarter, the full moon, the last quarter, 
and the new moon. Because it takes 29.53 days for a full moon to a full moon, if you divide that by the four major phases, it comes to about 7.38 days to transition from one phase to the next. But when you're trying to make a calendar, the 0.38 doesn't really add up. So that extra bit of time just got chopped off the end and was replaced later at the end of the year in order to account for the remaining days that our year actually has as the Earth goes around the sun. When you do the math, you'll actually find that that brings the moon's year to about 354 days. The extra 11 days that you have to tack on just come from the partial orbit of the moon as it goes around the Earth to complete the Earth's year. So we derive our seven day week from the time it takes to go from one phase of the moon to the next, which is just over seven days. It's because of the moon. That's really why we do seven day weeks. why we do seven days. I would have never thought that. I would have thought it had been like just for business reasons or just to have an easier way to keep calendar. Huh, that's cool. Finally, I asked everyone a question that's pretty relevant to the year 2018 because we actually had two of these this year. And that question was, what is a blue moon? A balloon moon? I have no idea. It's a great song. It's a lot of songs, yeah. Um, blue moon. A blue moon is when it's being blocked by something. I don't know. It's, hmm. Um, a blue moon. I I don't know. There's the phrase once in a blue moon. Oh yeah, I do know the phrase, but um, I don't know why they say that. Ooh. A blue moon. A blue moon. I don't know this one. You know, I, do, I just do hear that one people say. What happened in January? Do you remember we've had them? Yeah. And do you remember why? Or when actually when it happened? Do you remember why? Does it have something to do with it being over a specific portion of the Earth at that time? We've already had one. Yeah, I was going to say, I know we've had them. Yeah. I don't, just don't know. I never looked to see why we were. Wow. Can I, can I like phone a friend? Like what's going, how many blue moons are there in a year? Or do they come every? Every 2.7 years. One blue moon every 2.7 years. If we have a full moon on the first of the month, when are we gonna have another full moon? Uh, the last. Yeah, the last day in that month. Doesn't happen very often. The blue is the second full moon of a month. Oh. Got it, okay. So, oh, that's interesting, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Wow. That is really oh. cool. A blue moon is actually when we have two full moons in one month. Now remember, it takes 29.53 days for the moon to go from its full phase to another full phase. So a blue moon can only occur if the first full moon takes place on the first or second day of any month, except for February. In fact, the blue moon can only happen about once every 2.7 years, and the cycle repeats about every 19 years. But there is a cycle in which two blue moons can happen in the same year and 2018 was one of those years. When a full moon occurs on January 1st, like it did in 2018, there will be another full moon on January 31st. In 2018, this actually happened to line up with the supermoon and a lunar eclipse, and so it was called the super blue blood moon. Now, because the full moon only occurs once every 29.53 days, this means that when it happened on January 31st, the next full moon didn't occur until March 1st. And because it happened on the first of a month, another full moon occurred on March 31st, giving 2018 two blue moons. Due to the way that our calendar is structured, February is actually the only month that can be skipped on a full moon cycle. This isn't anything special. In fact, there's no specific reason why February has 28 days, except for when the calendar was being formed way back when, prior to when we had the Julian calendar. As I discussed in my previous video, the Romans actually thought that having a month with an even number in it was unlucky. And so when they were arranging the calendar to match up with Earth's orbit, they gave every month 29 days or 31 days. And at the time, February actually was at the end of the year. So the Romans decided to chop off a day of February and just go with the flow. Now there are two types of blue moons. There's what's known as the monthly blue moon, which is what we usually think of when we think of a blue moon. It's when a blue moon occurs in a month or two full moons in one month. Then there's the other type, which is known as a seasonal blue moon. And this is when four full moons happen in a single season. And a seasonal blue moon can only happen when the first full moon of a season is on the equinox or within a couple days afterward. A good example of this was back in 2016, 
when a full moon occurred on March 23rd. The next full moon occurred on April 22nd, and the moon after that, which was known as the blue moon, was on May 21st. Then the fourth and final full moon of the spring season was on June 20th, the last day of spring. Had there been a full moon on March 19th, then that wouldn't have been spring yet and there wouldn't have been a seasonal blue moon. So that's why our calendar is divided the way it is. We have 12 months because there are 12 full phases of the moon within a calendar year of 365.2425 days. And we have seven days in a week because it takes just over seven days to transition from one phase of the moon to the next. A blue moon is the second full moon in a month with 30 or 31 days, or the third full moon of a season that has four full moons in it. It's all about the geometry of how the Earth moves around the sun and how the moon moves around the Earth. Oh, that's interesting. Good job. Yeah, that last, oh, good job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That one was difficult. So, wow, very nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Learned cool. something new. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So cool. Really awesome. awesome. Thank you. Wow. Well, awesome. Look what I learned today. <laughs> Next week, I'll actually be discussing Mars, and we'll be talking about why Mars doesn't have months. And this will really make you think about how we're going to structure calendars of the future on planets and even moons that don't have orbits similar to Earth's. So I wanna thank you guys for watching, and be sure to hit that subscribe button over here. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll have the links to those below. And you can also just check out my Patreon page where you can help support me make these videos for as little as $2 a month. Once I reach 50 patrons, I'll actually begin hosting giveaways. There'll be free t-shirts just like this one. There'll be free books, merchandise, Skype calls, or hangouts with me. Or if I'm traveling to your town for a video, we can meet up for coffee or something. So be sure to head on over there and check it out. And until the next time, here's to all your endeavors.